Is that how you play Dominant Seventh Arpeggios, Treble? everyone, Clint Tucker, guitar trainer and coach. Thanks for being here. I'm going to be helping you learn how to solo through this song. And if you would, go ahead and like and subscribe. Alright, we're in standard tuning. Uh, we'll go ahead and tune up. 1E. E. Two B. Three G, four D, five A, and six E. Okay, this song that we've been working on has been involving the A seven chord. the D7 chord, this F major 7 sharp 11, and the E7 sharp 9, the hindrance chord. What we're using are bits and pieces of these chords in different forms to construct this solo. So the first thing I wanted to do is start off with a statement. And the song is in like an A7 sound, so that's the very first thing that we are doing. So I used the A, but instead of playing the A, we're gonna play the G on the second string bent up to the A. Immediately, you start off with a bang. You already have the listener's attention. And it's a little bit more um, exciting than just playing that note. Okay, so that's the first thing. The next thing that we're going to get into is this A7 chord. So I am outlining this chord on the 9th fret 3rd string, 8th fret 2nd string, and 9th fret 1st string. So if we think about our 5 crucial shapes, which if you don't know those, that's a really good um, place to look is this little video right here. That's a D7 shape. So we're just taking the D7 shape. Now it's an E7 shape. Now it's an F7 shape. Now it's a G7 shape. Now we're in A7. And we're using that right there. So we have our bend. Then we're going to play the A note, the G note, the E note, and the C sharp note. So if I take my intervals, that is one, flat seven, Five, three, which is exactly the intervals we've been attacking this entire song. Okay, now if you want to, you can uh, let that hang out a little bit longer. Put some vibrato on it, or you can make it like ab uh, uh, abrupt. Either one sounds pretty cool. Alright, now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to outline this chord right here. Guess what that is? It's an A7. Um, and what it's going to be using is uh, a 12th fret 1st string, 
ninth fret first string. And so that's going to be finger four, then finger one. Then finger two on the second string is on the A note, tenth fret. Then we're going to go to the twelfth fret, third string. And then we're going to hit the ninth fret, third string with finger one. So basically, we're starting with the E note, and then we're ending with the E note before we do our next thing. Now, you can do this with picking. You can do this with a hammer-on, pull-off type of thing. And I think I actually use a hammer-on, or a pull-off. Now, remember, if you don't know for sure about what you're doing with a pull-off to get it clean, try to pluck the string that is attached to the anchor finger. So you play this with the pick, but then... I'll kind of zoom up here. Pluck the string with your finger. Don't actually try to pull off. Pluck. You can get a lot more mileage out of this with no effort. I'd pluck that one too. It gives you a different sound compared to pick. And then we're going to hit the 4th uh, string 12th fret, the D note. And then I think we hit the 9th uh, fret, and then 10th fret, and then the 11th fret. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Now all of that sounds really good over an A7. And also, I don't know if you're noticing this, but I'm climbing. I started here, then I went here, then I went here. This is allowing my listener to have uh, higher pitches to grab their attention, to kind of give the intensity a little rise. Then, I think that's what we're going to do next. Which is another A7 lick. We're going to take the F sharp on the third string, 11th fret, do a half bend to that flat 7 G. Then we're going to hit the E, fourth string, 12th fret, D. Ninth fret, twelfth, uh, fourth string. That's the the B, C natural, and then C sharp. So that's a twelve, nine, ten, eleven. So this is this enclosure to the third. Once again, look at this. There is our A seven. So we get through with that, and now the D7 is coming up. So what we're going to do is we're going to mirror exactly what we did for the A7, and we're going to do it here at the D7. So we're going to do the bend on the 13th fret so we can bend up to the 1. And we're going to go to the 15th fret of the 2nd string, which is the D note, and we'll hit D, C, A, F sharp. Same exact shape that we did here at the ninth fret. So if you ever wonder if you're getting it right, if you target the notes that are in the chord, it's going to sound really good. And if you use a pull-off, 
you'll give it a little bit more of a slinky sound. If you pick it, you give it a little bit more power. Either way, it'll it'll work um, depending on what you're wanting your uh, audience to hear. Okay, we're going right back to the A7. This time we're going to use double stops. Double stops are such a good tool. What the double stops do is they give you a hint of the chord. But they also give it a certain grit and, and they give it a certain grit uh, um, and vibe. Almost like a, a harmonicas and pianos. So the way I'm doing this one is I'm going to go into a hybrid uh, vibe. So I use fingers 2 and 3, which is M and A, P-I-M-A, Pima. M and A right here. And I'm going to grab strings 2 and 1. And I'm at... 16 and 14, which are half steps below what I really want people to hear. If we stayed right there, it would not sound good. But when we slide, guess what we give everybody the A7 sound. That is the flat seven and the five. So it works on a lot of different levels. And I'm doing... So I'm doing this slide. Then I'm hitting two double stops. And I believe I do uh, four of these. And then on the last one, I go to the 13th fret and second, uh, uh, second string and 12th fret of the first string. And I do a partial bend on the C note, which is on the 13th fret. Can you almost hear the A? Then I hit the 14th fret, third string. And then right above, there's my, my uh, fifth. That's my E note on the 14th fret, fourth string. I'm going to do a grace note slide. So the grace note is where you don't actually hear like the actual, you just hear this. So it's not on the beat, it's against the beat. And then, I'm going to, so I'm sliding back to the 12th fret, 4th string. And then I'm doing that on the 10th fret, 4th string. And I'm doing that slight bend up. Then I'm hitting the 12th fret on the 5th string, the A. So when we put that together... Hopefully you hear that without that little fail right there at the end. Here comes the F chord. We're bringing in tension. First thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to slide into the F. So I'm now using 15, 14, 13. There's my F. Remember what I said. If you use chord tones in your solo, if the notes were in the chord, it's going to work. Okay, now I'm going to hit the 15th, string, uh, 15th fret on the 2nd string and slide up. This gives me this unique sound that I really like. And then I'm going to ring in to the 13th fret 1st string, the F note. So I'm giving that sound. And then I'm just going to retrace my steps and go back. 
So 17, slide back to 15. 13 on the second string. 14 on the third string. And then go back to the 13th fret. That gives me this sense of completion. Okay, here comes our E Hendrix chord. I am going to straight up just bend. And one of the reasons why I didn't do anything else is cause I didn't want to try to do anything flashy that would cost me precious moments of space to get back to my A idea. There was definitely some things we could do right here. Uh, one thing we could do is uh, we could do like a and we could outline the chord and do like that chord shape right there. Hit the flat seven and then back. But one of the issues that we run into is that you kind of don't get to hear all the chord tones that are in this. If I just do that. But this... If I did like a unison bend right there, that works great. Or if I did like that kind of thing where if I bent up from the 15th fret, then went straight to the, the sharp nine that's in the chord, bent that up, then hit the ninth fret on the third string and, and got that tonic, got that root. Like you know, almost like an exclamation point, that would have worked too. I just decided to go because I'm already thinking about what's happening in that A7 that's coming up at the end. So that made it easier for me to map my next move. While I'm bending, I'm thinking about this A right here. So I give it some space, I let the beat come through, and then I set up my final little run which we're going to be using this kind of uh, trail and I do a full bend on that 8th fret then I hit 5 on the 1st string 8, 5 on the 2nd string I do a little bend right there on the 7th fret 3rd string then hammer five to six on the third string, seven on the fourth, five on the fourth, so seven five. Then I'm going to hit seven six five pull off, slide down to three on the five string, hit the C sharp on the fourth fret. That sets finger four or finger three up right here. To the A. And we hit the G. G sharp. A. C. C sharp. A. That helped me finish out the lick to where I ended right with the music. If I didn't have those other two beats, I probably would have ended it like this. That would have sounded really cool and just ended on that C sharp. What I could have also done, maybe, is... Is played that actual little arpeggio from the original um, lick of the song. Maybe I, I might have needed to get back to it. Let's see here. I could have done that, maybe. I could have done that. Now you're starting to see my thought processes, what I start to do. I start to think about what do I need to finish out that bar length. If I've got two beats, 
I need to either do um, eight eighth notes, I mean, uh, four eighth notes or eight sixteenth notes. So I could come up with something. But if I put a rest in there or something like that, I can make a little bit more triplet based stuff. <laughs> And then I start thinking about, okay, you know, does that sound pretty good? I think it sounds pretty cool. So I keep it. And then I just use this as a template. Now, in order to come up with this, I probably went through that solo about five little runs. And I was telling a student the other day that I try to use my ear as the narrator of a story and I'm following my melody is the story and my fingers in, is my instinct and my instinct is the audience so if I do this my ear might hear like so I am actually going to go there and then from there I'm going to go into some different op you know, opportunities. I could do like that, or maybe I could do that. I, I could try a couple of different options where finger one is on this note, finger two is on this note, finger three is on this note, and finger four. Either way, I start to work out a couple of ideas that seem to work for whatever finger is going to land on my next note. And then I start working through that. If you can craft a solo, you're making music, right? But tell a story. Don't just do whatever licks you want to play and not say anything. Give yourself a story to tell. And prayerfully, I hopefully told y'all a story with this and I'll help you be able to tell your story and give you more ideas to work with. If you don't know how to do any of that, email me at clint at cwtucker.com and let's set up a lesson. You know, you don't have to be stuck where you are. Um, you know, if your why is big enough, then your how will be easy. Uh, thanks guys for checking this out. Um, be on the lookout for new stuff and like and subscribe. And I've got backing tracks in the description and I've got the tabs to this. Um, Y'all have a blessed weekend and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.